Hello, and welcome to this special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review. I'm Peter Mogazel, and I have with me here uh, Scott Donaldson, who's an associate professor of medicine at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Scott, welcome, and thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. Scott, you're going to be presenting data on the uh, trial of VX661 and Ivacaftor. Can you tell me a little bit about what VX661 is? Sure. So VX661 is what we call a CFTR corrector. So it's a drug that's designed to actually improve the trafficking of uh, CFTR, mutant CFTR molecules from inside the cell up to the apical membrane of the cell where they need to be to function. And so that's the basic premise of what VX661 is. So what sort of trial was it and how was it conducted? This trial is a, a phase two trial. Uh, patients were enrolled uh, who were adults, so it was an adult-only study, uh, and they had a, a lung function requirement between 40 and 90 percent of predicted. And then uh, once enrolled, patients were randomized either to get a placebo, uh, to get uh, VX661 by itself at various doses, or to get a combination of VX661 plus Ivacaftor, which is a potentiator. So why was there an arm of the study that had both VX661 and Ivacaftor? Well, with Delta F508, the most common CFTR mutation, really there's uh, two problems. The first is that uh, the channel does not traffic from inside the cell to the apical membrane. But then a second problem, that once it gets there, it needs to be opened. So uh, to really uh, get the most uh, benefit that we can, we really need two drugs. One drug, a corrector, to get it from inside the cell to mm -hmm. the surface, and a second drug to open the channel. What were the main results of the trial? And so the main results, uh, first of all, focused on safety, uh, and in, with that regard, uh, we really didn't see any increase in ad, ad, uh, adverse events in general, or certainly not severe adverse events. So it looked very safe from all parameters that we've looked at. From an efficacy standpoint, uh, we focused on sweat chloride and lung function. Uh, the sweat chloride uh, responses uh, did indeed show uh, uh, small but significant uh, reductions in sweat chloride mm -hmm. with combination therapy essentially at all, uh, all the doses tested on the range of around five milliequivalents. So hearkening back to what was seen with uh, uh, earlier studies of another corrector, VX809. Uh, in terms of lung function, combination therapy uh, showed a dose-responsive improvement in lung function uh, that reached statistical significance of the two highest doses, 100 milligrams and 150 milligrams. And we did not see the same sort of significant improvement in lung function with monotherapy. So again, it, uh, it highlighted the fact that we really need a combination approach to improve lung function uh, with Delta F508. And about how big a rise in uh, lung function, I assume you're measuring FEV1, right. uh, did you see? So uh, the FEV1 expresses a relative change uh, uh, from baseline at the two uh, top doses of combination therapy improved to between 7.5 and 9% are predicted, so pretty substantial improvements. Uh, some studies have uh, looked at absolute changes in lung function, and so the absolute improvement in FEV1 was uh, between 45 and 5%. You mentioned VX809. What's the difference between the two drugs? Well, uh, in many respects, they are very similar. They're both correctors of a, the same uh, uh, class. Uh, there are some differences that have uh, come up uh, when comparing the, the trials that have been done, however. Uh, in the 809 trial, uh, we saw that uh, giving 809 by itself without uh, Ivacaftor on board, uh, for some reason caused a, a slight reduction in lung function, and there were a few more complaints of respiratory symptoms, so shortness of breath, ch chest tightness. Importantly, in the 661 trial that we just uh, are reporting on now, we did not see that with VX661 monotherapy, so that is one difference. Um, Beyond that, combination therapy with the two drugs looks pretty similar, uh, so hard to tease apart uh, differences with that regard. From a theoretical standpoint, uh, VX661 is interesting in that it doesn't have some of the same pharmacological properties as 809, and that it doesn't induce the metabolism of Ivacaftor. Mm. So down the road, it might wind up being a little bit easier to sort out, uh, to come up with combination therapies uh, that are effective in giving the right uh, pharmacokinetic coverage that you want. Uh, so what are the next steps for uh, 
this drug and this research program? Well, uh, the trial that we're doing now is still actually underway, uh, so additional patients uh, will be recruited into it. The exact details of uh, what those patients will be like and the details of the trial really haven't been announced yet, mm -hmm. uh, but we're looking forward to uh, enrolling more patients into this study and seeing where that takes us. And there's a lot of excitement at these types of drugs. Do you have uh, advice for clinicians about what they should tell patients uh, to expect in the future and what they should be doing now in anticipation? Well, you know, you always worry about being too optimistic, but uh, to be honest with the, the, the amount of data that's come forward so far, both with 661 and 809, it makes me certainly very optimistic that we're on the right track. Uh, that the, the drugs we have in hand today are going to be beneficial uh, in terms of improving lung function. And that, you know, that's the first step forward. And uh, you know, we're hearing other things at the meeting today that makes us very excited that uh, additional approaches with other drugs combining with what we have are going to be even more beneficial. So I think there's every reason to be very optimistic for the future. Well, that's very exciting. As you know, this is a, a very devastating disease and be able to offer people uh, therapies that are going to improve uh, function of CFTR would be a great leap forward. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me, Scott. Thank you. And thank you for joining me in this special edition of eCystic Fibrosis Review.